In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Tim Worthington's AV driver into your TurboGrafx-16. Uh, this is the only mod board that I've seen so far that gives you both video and audio amplification so that you get the proper signal levels on the output. If you don't want to go the mod route, you do also have other options. There's the original Turbo Booster that gives you composite video output, but not S-Video or RGB. DB Electronics also makes the DB Booster that gives you composite S-Video and RGB, but it uses up your extension port on the back. So if you ever wanted to get a, a CD attachment, you wouldn't be able to do that. The mod is kind of the only way to get the best of both worlds. And it's also like the DB Booster is like two or three times more expensive than this mod. So um, this is also a cheaper route. Um, so let's go ahead and dig in. So the first thing we need to do is set up the AV driver. Uh, so jumper two here, that makes sure that we get 75 ohm C-Sync output. So we get the correct sync output level. Uh, we also need to jumper these top three on each of the video channels that makes sure we get the proper video output level. And then since we've done that, we also need to set the bias the same. So the top three on the bias there uh, should also be jumpered. You'll notice we just left channel four open. Uh, that's because we only have red, green, and blue. We have no use for channel four, so that's all we got to do. Uh, next, we need to open up the console. So there are one, two, three, four, five, seven screws on the back there. Um, so just undo each of these screws. That would be using a, a game bit like you would use on the NES or Super Nintendo or Genesis games. Uh, once you've got those done, just pop off the back. There's also two screws on either side of the hue card slot you need to take out. Um, once you've done that, come back here. You're going to need to kind of wiggle this little power jack back and forth until it kind of rocks out of there. And then you can just set it aside uh, kind of out of the way. And then I find when I'm actually going to pull this thing out of there that pulling from the back seems to be the, uh, the easiest. So you're going to want to come in here and pop that out and then just pull this out. Once you've got that out, uh, you just pull the sliding switch cover off. There's another screw here uh, that you got to take out as well as two on either side of the extension port on the back. Um, last thing we got to do is get the shield off. So each of these is a solder point for the shield. It's actually pretty easy to get off. Just heat up with your soldering iron. And then once it's uh, fluid, just pull it out and keep going around doing that until you can get the shield off. So once you're there, just gotta figure out where you're gonna put the board. So one option is here, you would remove the RF modulator and put it there. Another is you could put it over here. And then what I'm actually gonna do is put it in the back here. This allows for some really short cable runs and it gets the cable kind of out of the way. Wherever you decide to put it is fine just things to keep in mind. Uh, to actually put the board in, I'm using double stick uh, poster tape here. So just get that on the bottom of your board. This is non-conductive tape, I tested it, so it's not gonna cause any problems with the electronics. Uh, I'm just gonna use it to secure the AV driver to the board. So I'm putting it in place here and then just kinda pressing it down to make sure it's stuck on there nice and solid. Once you've got that there, you're going to want to flip your board over. This is where you're going to be soldering wires to go to the AV driver uh, from the underside of the extension port here. And then on the AV driver itself, uh, on the bottom side here, we've got our video inputs, one, two, and three. And then our video outputs. It doesn't really matter which goes where, as long as red to red, green to green, etc. Um, up here, we've got ground, uh, plus five volts. You're gonna wanna connect a second loose wire here as well to go to the jack and then C-Sync from the bottom. And then this is gonna be our sync output. So just run a loose wire there. And then we come up here, we've got inputs for our audio left and right. And then we've got outputs and ground. These will go to the jack. Uh, speaking of, we've got the output jack here. This is if you're looking at it from the inside of the console. Uh, how you would connect all of the stuff from the AV driver to it. And then once you're done, uh, you should have something that looks kind of like this. Um, you, where, how exactly you mount the jack is kind of up to you. I just cut 
a hole in the back there so I could do it. Um, there's a couple different options. The nice thing here was don't have to worry about cutting the uh, shield to do it. And then before you close up, you may also want to check out my video on the jail bar fix. Um, as long as you got the console open, might as well take care of that. The capacitors are included with the AV driver. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Just a reminder, any supplies you need, I got links in the description below. So give those a, ch a look uh, and uh, sh enjoy.